So I'm speaking this morning on the title, The Holy Spirit and the Dream Ministry. The Holy Spirit and the Dream Ministry. Are you still here? If you're still here, say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, so we need to seriously consider the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. A lot of us are shortchanged because we don't even know about the person and the power of the Holy Ghost. The struggle we are going through now is because we decided not to fellowship, not to connect with the person and the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you still here? So when we look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit, first and foremost, will we be able to truly appreciate the influence of the Holy Spirit over our dream life? Is that okay? I said, is that okay? We need to engage because it's a teaching. Number one, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is our comforter and our teacher. Are you still here? For the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Ghost is first our comforter and our teacher, our guide, and he will remind us of the things that we forget. How can you say it's difficult for you to make ends meet? How can you say you are clueless? You don't have knowledge, you don't have wisdom. When the Holy Ghost is our teacher, is our guide, he will teach us all that we need to know. And even when we forget, he will remind us. Number two, the Holy Ghost is the power source. Or better put, the Holy Ghost is the power surge. Oh, I thought somebody would say, uh-huh. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive what? Power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be what my witnesses. From Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria. Even to the uttermost part of the earth. You need the power of God to be an effective witness. And the power will only come when the Holy Ghost has come. Are you still here? Somebody say, Holy Ghost! Is that your best? Say, my channel! My channel! Is open! Fill me now! Number three. The Bible said the Holy Ghost is our guide into all truth. What, did it, what, did, what does the Bible say? It's our guide on, into all truth. John 16 verse 13. Albeit, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. When the spirit of truth is come, it will guide you into all truth. Into what? Guide you into what? All truth. Listen to me, child of God. The only reason why somebody we wrongly divide the word of God is because he was interpreting the word of God from the flesh. The spirit of God is the spirit of the word of God. You can't interpret the word of God without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of all truth. There's no truth you're looking for. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of all truth. If not so, everybody will interpret the Bible whichever way they like. If you are sleeping, say, aha, aha. We are not sleeping, I'm just moving around. Though. Are you still here? But all of us have the opportunity to work with the Holy Ghost so that it can interpret to us all truth. Are you still here? Say, Lord Jesus, I am available. Let the spirit of all truth flow through me. Walk through me. Say it now. Flow through me. Walk through me. Flow through me. Walk through me. In the name of Jesus. The third information. 1 Corinthians 2.11 For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of that man, which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit guide us into the mind of God. 
Oh, I don't know what God wants for me. I don't know the will of God. No, if you know the Holy Spirit, you will know the will of God. Because the Holy Spirit guides us into the mind of God. Are you still here? Say, Holy Spirit, possess me. Say it like you mean it. Uh huh. Say it one more time. Uh huh. Number four, because of our time. The Holy Spirit is our sanctifier. The word sanctifier means the one who makes us holy. Now, I need you to underscore that. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes us holy, who sanctifies us. First Peter chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 2. To God's elect chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us with the word of God, with the blood of the Lamb. Every time you come to church and you hear the word of the Lord, the Holy Spirit uses that word to sanctify you, make you holy. Can I ask you a question? Is it possible to be holy without the Holy Spirit? There is a doctrine that has plagued my generation. That doctrine says, before you will receive the Holy Spirit, you have to be holy. That is the doctrine of self-righteousness. And that doctrine is killing people. Is somebody listening to me? It's making people to go into depression. Because they think they can never make heaven. Why? They thought that it's by their self-righteousness they will make heaven. But you know, and I know, that the Bible says, all our righteousness... I like you there. Are you still here? So the Holy Spirit is the one that makes us holy. The problem is this. We have not preached long enough the holiness of the Holy Spirit. That is what is called the holiness of the Holy Spirit. Self-righteousness kills. Because suddenly you discover that you are grossly inadequate. You don't measure up. So it's not what you did, but it's what Christ did. Is somebody here? Are you still here? Say, Holy Spirit, sanctify me. Sanctify me. Make me holy. I give myself away. So I want to share with you seven important points about the Holy Ghost and how it relates to your dream life. Are you still here? Of course, you know that the, the very next important question or the very next important experience after your salvation is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Is what? Baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you have not been baptized with the Holy Ghost today, look at you and say, today, I will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Say, it's my birthright. It's my inheritance in Christ Jesus. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, which means salvation. But he that cometh after me is mightier than high. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Someone say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Fire. fire. Say it again. Uh-huh. Say it one more time. Uh-huh. Watch this. Your encounter as a child of God with the Holy Spirit must be in two ways. You must have encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit. You must have encounter with the power of of the Holy Ghost. Are you still here? When Jesus comes to baptize you. And hands are laid upon you. Two major things happen. The person of the Holy Ghost possesses you. And the power of the Holy Ghost overshadows you. You must every second be in tune with the fellowship with the person of the Holy Ghost. So that you can carry the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you still here? If you are still here, say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. So when we talk about, when we talk about the, our experience with the Holy Spirit, 
as believers, there are, there are two major experiences when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. The first one is what is called the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say infilling. Say it well. Can I have my gadget for illustration? Say infilling of the Holy Ghost. Say it like a minute. Please be fast. Say it like a minute. Say infilling of the Holy Ghost. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. And do not be drunk with wine. For that is dissipation. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Somebody say be filled with the Holy Spirit. So there's an experience that is called the filling with the Holy Spirit. Say the filling. Let me to open this. I put it there. The filling with the Holy Spirit. So, so that was what happened at Pentecost. When the Christians were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Remember? And the Bible said they spoke in tongues and prophesied. When hands are laid on you, the first thing that happens, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And there's an evidence that you speak in tongues and if you have faith, immediately you begin to prophesy. Are you still here? Are you getting me? Acts chapter 2, verse 2 and 4. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were seated. They saw what seemed to be the tongue of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Listen to this. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Somebody is going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, let me go to the place where... If you like to drink wine, the best wine to drink is the wine of the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? Somebody is going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And when you are filled, they will say, is he drunk? <laughs> is somebody listening to me here? Because the Holy Spirit takes over your visage, your courage. It takes over your persona. Is somebody listening to me here? It also happened when Paul lay hands in Acts chapter 9, verse 4 and 6. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Are you still here? Luke chapter 24, verse 1. It says, And Jesus said, And behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. I send the promise of the Father upon you. The next experience of the Holy Ghost is called the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. There's the infilling of the Holy Ghost. The moment hands are laid upon you, you receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Evidenced by speaking in tongues and prophesying. But then, the Bible says there's another one, experience called outpouring. You see the word? Jesus said unto he says, stay. Luke 24 verse 1 said, Behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Watch this. Until ye be endued with the power from on high. Somebody say, endue. Talk to me now. Talk to me somebody. The Hebrew word and the Greek word for endue or endowment is enduo. Is enduo. And enduo means to sink into to put on or to clothe oneself with. So, in actual fact, Jesus is saying, until ye be sunk in like cloth by the Holy Ghost, or until you are put on by the Holy Ghost, until you are clothed by the Holy Ghost. That is what the outpouring does. Those are the two major stages of our relationship with the Holy Ghost. Let me share with you how it happened in the life of Jesus. How many of you know that Jesus was filled and there was also an outpouring? Watch this. Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Luke chapter 4 verse 1. And Jesus be full. You can't be full until you are filled. True or false? Jesus be full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness are you still with me if you are still with me shout hallelujah 
But watch verse 14. Watch verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Oh, I thought it was fit. Yes, there's a difference between the infilling and the outpouring. Are you still here? Jesus was filled. The purpose of filling is teaching, is guidance, is instruction. Because the Bible says, Jesus was led. Was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tested for the outpouring. Verse 14 says, and he came back in the power of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Are you still here? This is me. This is you. As soon as we're going to lay hands on you, as many as want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, because you need the Holy Spirit to be able to flow in revelation. As soon as we lay hands on you, this is what happens. You're filled. You're filled. You're filled. You're speaking in tongues. You're filled. You are prophesying. But it's not enough. You have to build up your most holy faith. How do you do that? How do you build up the Holy Spirit? By praying in the Spirit. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Building up yourself in your most holy faith. And praying in the Holy Ghost. As you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you build up. You pray in the Holy Ghost, you build up. Don't stop praying in the Holy Spirit. Pray one hour in the Holy Spirit. Pray two hours. Pray three hours. Pray seven days. Non-stop in the Holy Ghost. As you are doing that, you are building up yourself in the Holy Ghost. Are you still here? But it doesn't stop at that. The Bible said, give me another one. Okay, so we're still point. Jesus came back in the power of the Holy Ghost. So, after he went to be tested in prayer and fasting, he was tested. Will you be able to carry the power that is coming? He was tested in prayer and fasting, in discipline, in ability to restrain himself. The Bible said, he came in the power of the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible said, and when he came in the power of the Holy Ghost, his fame went abroad. So, watch this. As you are feeling, and you are building up yourself, you are trying your own. But watch this. When you take a mature step, you step out of the busy shadow, you take time with the Holy Ghost, you pray and fast marathon prayer. What are you doing? You are invoking the outpouring. The outpouring. The outpouring. The outpouring. And it continues to pour. It continues to pour. It continues. Keep opening it. It continues to pour. Is somebody listening to me? You have built up your only faith. You have prayed in spirit, in tongues. Shorty Tony, it keeps burning. The fire keeps burning. There's an outpouring. There's an outpouring. 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 There's an outpouring. There's an outpouring. Because you have paid the price. Is somebody listening to me? You are saying, I am disciplined enough to carry the power. To carry the power. I must be a witness. An effective witness for Jesus. Listen to me. There's no way you will witness for Jesus without signs and wonders. The Holy Spirit teaches you when he fills you. But when it comes upon you, he empowers you. Gives you capacity. Enables you. Gives you energy. Gives you strength. Gives you ability to do signs. Healing. Wonders. For that is what makes you an effective witness. If they don't see signs, they will not believe. Are you still here? Say Holy Spirit. I am ready. Say it one more time. Aha. Say it one more time. Aha. Say let the compelling power of the Holy Ghost, His presence and His power possess me now. Possess me now. Possess me now. In the name of Jesus. Sit down. So let's talk about the outpouring a little bit more. You have heard about the infilling. You have heard about the outpouring. But let's talk about the outpouring a little bit more. 
This is where the church loses it. So, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power. Amplified Bible classic edition says, you will receive ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That's an outpouring. Are you still here? And then you are able to be my witness. Are you still here? So the first thing that happens when there is an outpouring, power to witness. To witness effectively with signs following. And you don't get that with going about eating sugar cane, popcorn. No, you discipline yourself. You take time out. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tested in prayer and in fasting. When he qualified, he came back in the power of the Holy Ghost. Or else you just be an ordinary Christian and God does not want that for you. Look at your number and say, no, no, I'm not an ordinary Christian. <laughs> say like you mean it now. Jump to your feet, jump to your feet. Go and tell seven people. Say, I'm not an ordinary Christian. I'm a glory carrier. I'm a fire vomiter. I'm not an ordinary Christian. Yagabosa. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Sit down. We are still talking of the outpouring. Somebody say outpouring. When you pay the price, what is the price? Prayer and fasting. This kind goeth not except by prayer. Some of you don't like to fast. You are quick to say, doctor told me I have ulcer. You will fast and ulcer will disappear. Ulcer will tell you, oh, this one, this one is not cooperative. Oh. Do you understand? Because when you fast, you qualify for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2, 17 and 18. Watch this one. Verse 17 says, in the last days. Right? God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see vision. Your old men will dream dreams. In other words, the second experience of an outpouring is revelational power. Revelational power. Who is blind but my prophet? The Holy Ghost is our eyes. It's the one that reveals things to us. Are you listening to me? So in the last days, did you see the word last day? On the line is last day. Say last day. Say it again. Say it one more time. The last day is going to pour out its revelational power. If you don't want it, it's pouring it upon all flesh. Not only on believers. Hello? So Muslim dream dreams. Are you listening to me? Shall go worship our dream dreams because he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. If you don't want, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. But listen to me, in the last days, it's important for you to know that something is significant. Daniel told us what is significant. Daniel 12, 4. He said, but thou, O Daniel, shut up these words. Seal the book. Even to the time of the hand. To the time of the hand. To the time of the hand. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. The purpose of the power of revelation is for knowledge to increase. In this last days, God wants to give you revelation that increases you in wisdom, in information, in understanding, in insights. Are you still here? Somebody say, Lord, encounter 